Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's gonna be a fun day. Today we are going to be talking about the EOS R. And uh, we're gonna be looking at the uh, multifunction touch bar or swipe bar or touch bar or whatever you call it. And I'm going to be talking about how I set it up for my photography and how it's functional to me because it was a very controversial thing when it came out and it was easy to accidentally touch and swipe and there's a lot of issues with it but uh, I'm going to talk about how I set it up for my photo shoots and use it in a way that's functional and useful for me. So uh, stick around, roll the intro. Alright, so now we're filming on a 50 millimeter lens. The previous clip was shot on a 16 to 35 and I'm just curious to see what these different focal lengths look like. And this is a 50 millimeter f1.8 EF lens at f2.8. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. I also switched up my mic. I'm using the Comica WM200 uh, mics, lav mics, and before I was using the Rode Video Micro. So I want to see what the sound is like, if there's any difference between the two. Uh, two mics. But anyway, back to this. This is the uh, the EOS R and this is why we're here to uh, look at this swipe bar right here. So the swipe bar has uh, a couple functions. It has a left tap, it has a right tap, and then of course you have your swipe left and right for adjusting. If you want to go ISO up or down, that kind of thing. And then left tap, right tap is like a single tap for turning on a setting or turning off a setting. So uh, yeah, that's how it works. Plus, there is a lock feature you can set up in the menu. You can set it, I think it's a one second lock. So you actually have to hold the touch bar down for one second before it unlocks and then you have access to your settings. So they say, some people say they touch it with their thumb by accident. Maybe if you have a really long thumb, but uh, yeah, there's a lock feature there if, uh, if you want. So uh, let's jump into the menu and uh, take a look at that. Okay, so let's pop open the EOS R and pop into the menu and take a look. So where you wanna to go to is this icon here and you wanna to go to page four where it says customize MFN bar. So we're gonna click on that. And uh, Canon gives you two options here for customizing the bar. You can customize it in photo or video mode or in playback mode. So here I have it set to swipe back and forth. So if I'm swiping back and forth to browse images, that's set to do that, but uh, I don't really use that because you can use the D-pad to go through stuff. So we're gonna go here to user customization. You can see here I have my left tap and right tap off and I just have the swipe on and the swipe is set to autofocus. But if you click on this button, you can kind of go through the different settings. So you can set it to adjust ISO, white balance, check focus display info, movie recording, some settings if you're doing some videography, flexible priority AE and back to AF. So what I'm interested in is AF. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'll show you just here on the left and tap, left and right tap, you have similar stuff. So you have autofocus, ISO speed, white balance, check focus display info, movie recording, flexible priority AE, autofocus. We're going to set it to off. So you pretty much have the same settings here with those buttons. So that is that. We're just going to set it to autofocus, back to menu. And here we have the lock, right? So if you wanna disable the lock, I usually have it disabled, but for demonstration, I'm gonna lock it so I can show you how to unlock it. Now we're gonna go out of here and we're gonna go into the viewfinder. So let's make this dark so we can actually see the details. So we're gonna turn that off and take the ISO down to 200. Now we have a nice dark screen to work with. So I touch the bar and nothing's really happening. So to unlock it, you have to hold the left tap for one second, and now we have access. So if I swipe left, we're on eye tracking, and if I swipe right, I can go through different focus modes. And uh, I wanna get rid of that, I just want eye tracking and then spot focus. So in order to do that, we're going back into the menu, we're going to autofocus, and I believe it's five, yeah, limit autofocus method. So we click on that, and now these are all the autofocus methods we have available to us. So I'm gonna start turning them all off, except for these two, right? So now I have the tracking mode and I have just the spot focus. Hit okay, and uh, we're gonna go out. So now we're gonna unlock this. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna take off the lock because I demonstrated how it works and now we're just gonna get rid of it because it's annoying. 
and there we go. So now if I swipe left, I go into face tracking and if I swipe white, right, I have just focus points so I can move that around on the screen. So if I'm composing a shot and I want that in focus, I just click there or I want that in focus or that in focus or if I want to go back to tracking eyes, I just swipe left so it's super fast. Now let's get uh, a picture up here. I'm going to get a little video of a face talking and I'll demonstrate this stuff. Okay, so here we have a little GB ASMR. I'll link her down below if you want to give her a watch. She does a lot of cool ASMR videos. So right now we are in face tracking. So as soon as we hold down the shutter button halfway, you'll see the blue square around her eye and it's tracking her eye. Now let's say I want to focus on that plant in the foreground. I quickly swipe to the right. I can click here and now the plant is in focus. So I can take that shot. If I want to focus on her eye, it'll track her eye again. And we can take those shots as well. So it's pretty cool. As soon as you let go, it stops tracking. So it's set to uh, track every time the, the shutter button is pushed halfway. And there we go. And it does a pretty good job at uh, tracking the eye. This is the, uh, the latest firmware as of January 2021 on the EOS R. <clears throat> All right, plot twist, plot twist. This whole video was filmed in 8K on the EOS R5 and downsampled to 4K. Does it look any different? Does it look different from my other videos? If you've watched other videos on my channel and if you haven't, what are you waiting for? There's tons of good content. Definitely subscribe, give it a watch. But yeah, just curious. This is the first time I've tried to film an entire video for YouTube in 8K and downsample it to 4K. Does it look better? Is it sharper? Is it cleaner? I don't know. Let me know. I haven't seen the footage yet, but uh, yeah, definitely interested to see if it makes a difference. With that being said, this video is now over. Hopefully you enjoyed that content on the uh, multifunction touch bar. It's an interesting piece of tech because it's only ever going to exist on the EOS R. I don't think Canon is going to bring it back on any other camera body, although personally I did like it. I hope it does come back. I hope there's a joystick and a touch bar somewhere because I thought it was pretty useful to use. So um, yeah, hopefully this video gives you some ideas, teaches you how to set it up, how to program it, and maybe gives you some ideas on how you can use it in your photography workflow or video workflow to make it functional for you and improve the speed at which you can create. And uh, that's what it's all about, just making things faster and easier for you. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe to the channel. I got more stuff coming up. I got Photoshop tutorials. And when this pandemic is over, I'm gonna take you on some behind the scenes so we can work with some models and I can show you some BPS stuff. And uh, we're also gonna do some uh, Lightroom tutorials, Premiere Pro tutorials, and uh, lots of fun stuff. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely subscribe to the channel. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.